guy gets to the pulpit and says, well, you know, we're in a series on 1 Peter, you know, and now we're in 1 Peter 3, 14 through 22, and we're just going to skip this. <laughs> he goes, it's just so strange. I don't know what's going on here. We're just going to skip yeah. it. And he did. Like, they're not, it just wasn't even there. I tell the story a lot about the First Peter three uh -huh. you know, passage because yeah. this is the the spiritual warfare passage, and people listening to me right now are thinking, "Well, I know First Peter three. That, that's that crazy passage. Where are you getting spiritual warfare out of that?" First Peter three fourteen through twenty two. So you have Peter for whatever reason, um, you know, he, he what, what does he throw into the blender? You know, I'll, I'll stick with the meal <laughs> just for the <laughs> sake of this. But it, we've got Noah, we've got the ark. We've got the spirits in prison. We've got the There's resurrection. Spirits still chained. Right, spirits <laughs> still, still there in prison and chains. We've got, you know, Jesus. Like, what in the world is going on here? Like, how, what possible relationship? Defiled themselves with foreign, right. strange the flesh. Angels, yeah. Yeah, like, like, what? This must have just been a bad day for Peter. Like, I don't yeah. know what to write, so I'm throwing it all in there. You know, you, you will figure it out later. What relationship do these things have? Well, this is the passage, again, as my, my story goes, when we were in Wisconsin looking for a church, we thought we'd found one because this guy's going through 1 Peter. So we, you know, we, we, we skipped out a few weeks and visited some others. We come back and it's like, it's 1 Peter 3 day. And I'm thinking, this is it. This is going to be it, man. This is going to seal the deal right here because this is a weird passage. It's fun. You know, I can't wait to hear what this guy says. So this is the one where the guy gets to the pulpit. I've only ever seen this happen one time. Guy gets to the pulpit and says, well, you know, we're in a series on 1 Peter, you know, and now we're in 1 Peter 3, 14 through 22, and we're just going to skip this. <laughs> He goes, it's just so strange. I don't know what's going on here. We're just going to skip yeah. it. And he did. Like, they're not, it just wasn't even there. And I, I'm like, I'm so stunned. I've and never, another church it's that like, you just it's like, don't fit in. Right. Like. Just put the white flag on the pole and start waiting. <laughs> Honestly, I thought, I, what was going through my mind, other than we're not coming back, is could you just try <laughs> You should have could, stood up and said, haven't you heard of Azazel? Right, could yeah. you just try something? You know, just, just like fake it or so just try. <laughs> but it, it's actually not that terribly complicated because you have to, to kind of know, again, how to approach it, what Peter's doing. And I like to illustrate it this way. It, it's all about typology. And people say, what in the world's typology? Well, we know what a prophecy is. A prophecy, you, know, you read the prophets, it's a verbal utterance of something that's going to happen in the future. Okay? A type is a nonverbal thing or institution or event or person that foreshadows something in the future. Okay. It's a nonverbal prophecy. So, you know, the Passover lamb is a type of what happens with Jesus. Yep. It foreshadows, okay? Yep. There's a connection there. So... Paul, when he writes Romans, he uses Adam as a type of Jesus, a foreshadowing. He'll talk about Adam, and then he'll see, you know, he'll he'll proceed to go from what what we know about Adam to oh, see how this foreshadowed this part of Jesus' life and theology and all this stuff. He uses Adam as a foil or as a type. Peter doesn't use Adam; he uses Enoch. He yep. uses the story yep. of Enoch. So we know from Peter and from Second Peter that he knows this material well because he'll he'll allude to things that are in like the spirits in prison. That's not in the Old Testament with Genesis six. That that comes from right, other yeah, other yeah. literature. Yeah. So we know that he knows this well, and and so Peter uses the Enoch story that he assumes his readers know. And if you know the story, you know Enoch. Yes, he walks with God, but but this is again in connection with what happens before the flood with the sons of God, uh -huh. you know, yep. the watchers. And, and they're, be, they're being condemned. And so at one point in the story, of, that, as it's told in the book of Enoch, the watchers, you know, contact Enoch and say, well, you, you got a lot of favor with God, you know. So can you, like, go up to God and, and ask him to, to not, you know, keep us in prison here? We're sorry. It was wrong. You know, we get it. He's right. Could, could you go intercede for us? And so Enoch goes to God 
tells God what the request is. God says, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. And then he descends to the spirits in prison and he announces to them, well, you're still doomed. Yep. The answer yep. is no. And then he leaves. Okay, so Peter knows the story. It's connected with the flood. There you got the ark, the water, the whole bit. Ah, that's great. So, so when, when, when Jesus, he, get, he uses all that to, to mirror Jesus. When Jesus dies, he descends. Yep. And we know that part into the grave. I mean, it's even in the Apostles' Creed. You know, I mean, it's just stuff like this. But early church tradition linked baptism, because this is where this story is going to end with baptism, to a denunciation of the, of the, the dark powers in the baptismal formulas, because their idea was Jesus goes down there, he preaches to the spirits in prison, which are not the dead humans. It's, it's these guys. Yes, yes. Yeah, that caused all this and I, I think a lot, of, a lot of Christians would even think, uh, oh, the dead spirits, so those are like, you know, righteous people that died, and now they're getting yeah. to hear the gospel. They're, <laughs> they're the ones that are in prison. And, and so yeah. Jesus goes down there, and again, this is Mike's paraphrase, but it's like, I know you didn't expect to see me here, fellas. And you probably think that, that the rest of your compatriots won because I'm dead. No, the answer is no because he's I know some second Enoch. Right. I he's, know he's the second they Enoch. They like that's you, what Enoch told me. You are yeah. still uh, defeated. Yeah. You are still doomed. You're not getting out of here. Wow. But I am. <laughs> you know, I, I'm. And so that's where the resurrection comes in. So Peter uses the story. So is that he led to captivity captive? In other words, that's, he... that's something different. Okay. There, there's parts of it that are related, but it's something different because that that is conquest language for the dark powers. So that's, so he's you, a, that's probably yes. with the ascension, the ascension, with the yeah, and then the, the coming of the spirit and all that. Again, to to mess with you know the dark powers and you know, with the Holy Spirit. So Peter is actually playing off this story and he's using it as a type to to tell the story about Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that's why he says, you know. That baptism, when you're baptized with this story in mind, and he, he connects it to having a good conscience before God, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the, in faith and, and things like this. This is, baptism is important because it is a sign. It's as though you, when you go down below the water and come out, you are mimicking this journey of Jesus. Okay, we, we know this from Romans 6. You know, you're dumped yes. and you're brought up, but you're mimicking this. And if, if you have this in your head, when you go down under the water and come back up, it tells the spirits in prison that they're you're losers. You're standing here and they're I'm losers. Not. Yeah, right? it, it's, it's, a, like, it's a statement of who you're aligned with. Okay, it, it's it's really awesome it's when you think awesome. about what he's doing. Yeah, it's like say I I just saw it differently this time. It's like okay, so someone when they get baptized, it's like. It's almost like the Lord showing them off down, like just like Jesus. Guess what? Right. And it's it's in you're front staying of, here. I'm not. I'm not part we've of. We've got witnesses. The realm and, of the dead. Wow. And it's not just human witnesses. This is the yeah. supernatural part. Yeah. If if you're thinking about baptism the way Peter was trying to analogize it, uh huh. Who else gets the message of whose side oh. you're on? Yeah. They do. They do. We've lost another one, and we're still here. 